What's your name? Kane Ward. How old are you? Six. What'd you just do? Um, I landed up my first back row behind um the boat. How'd it feel? Awesome. What's up, guys? My name is Kane Ward. I'm a sponsored wakeboarder from Coleman, Alabama, and I am 12 years old. Hobbies I like to do other than wakeboarding is skateboarding, snowboarding, basketball, and flag football. Flag football is fun to play with my friends, and we're doing that constantly if I'm not doing wakeboarding. So that's about all my hobbies. My friends would probably describe me as hopefully good, but I think wakeboarder, long hair, volcano, my nickname. I don't really know. I'm trying to be humble. I do like to be funny sometimes. And like that doesn't lead me to get in trouble. It leads some other kids to get in trouble because they take it too far, but I know the limit. So as I said earlier, I'm from Coleman, Alabama, and it's a pretty small town. We got a, some woods behind us, some creeks here and there. I grew up wakeboarding on the small lake called Lake George about a mile away from us. Now that we've got into the bigger boats, uh, I ride on Smith Lake, which is a giant lake. So we ride there about every day. Wakeboarding is kind of like snowboarding, so it's a board and it's got curves and lines in it to where you can flow easily in the water and you have boots that are attached that you put your feet in and that keeps you attached to the board and then you have a rope and you attach it to the tower on the boat and you hold one side of it and the boat pulls you while you're riding and basically you can ride on the waves as you start to progress and maybe get a few jumps in on the waves and then start doing flips and stuff. And it just like evolves from there. Like the only way to go is up. Like, there's no limit to wakeboarding. You can, I, can do a gra I can do a flip and then I can grab the flip. I can do, a, I can do whatever I want. That's, that's what I love about wakeboarding. You have the freedom to do anything. So if you did two upside down 360s, that'd be pretty cool, like a double back roll. Oh, dude, let's go! So when I go wakeboarding, it's normally after school or in the morning. Uh, that's when you get the smoothest water, which that's what you're looking for. You don't want that tug on the rope bouncing up and down on waves. You want it to be as smooth as possible. And when you get out there on the water. Um, I normally check to see if my boots are tight, get a screwdriver, see if my boots are tight, get on the board where they don't move around. Basically just look for small things, like if the rope's good, if the fat sack is filled up, which fat sacks are what you do to get more weight in the boat. You put water in them and it makes the boat weigh down more, it makes the weight bigger, the more water you put in the boat. And uh, that's about it, speed, uh, rope length, everything's good. And then mainly the big thing we look for is if there's knots in the rope. You don't want to have knots in the rope because that, that 
it always ends up bad. You have knots in the rope, then you got to go back through it and undo the knot, or you get up without knowing and you make a big knot in your rope. So. I couldn't think of a cooler feeling. You get up on the lake, and then I normally do a little trick off the wake, always to start my set, and then I edge out and I butter slide, which glass. So that's all you see, and the board slides perfectly on the lake. The me looking at the boat, I get a little bit of tension lost in the rope, so it just feels like I'm floating, floating on the water. It's the coolest feeling. Like couldn't find anything cooler than that. So it's the top of the board. It's got all the bindings, boots on it and stuff, all the design where you're gonna be standing. And then these boots, these are called systems. So what they're gonna do is you're gonna put it right here. And as soon as you put it in, what you do, you pull this and it tightens the boot and you're gonna put your boot in it. And this will keep you strapped to the board. And then this is the bottom of the board. This is where the fins are, keeps you uh on the water and uh keeps you locked in where you don't slide around and then uh there's a light board so you'll be able to get up pretty easy on it I like that design yeah yeah you, you gotta zip it up so we're out here with isaac right now What's up, guys? we're about to uh get some wakeboarding in He's gonna try to get up for his first time, so hopefully it goes good. That was close, that was close. <laughs> we'll get another attempt. He'll come back around and we'll get another awesome. attempt. We're coming in for a second attempt. Uh, first one went pretty good, just let his arms out a little bit, so second attempt should be pretty good. Hopefully he gets up this time. So, ready when you are. Okay, second attempt was better than the first one, but hopefully we get this third attempt, him up and riding. So, whenever you're ready. This one, this is the one. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> So as a kid trying to get into wakeboarding, it's pretty easy. You can get into wakeboarding, anybody can do it. All you need is a boat, rope, board, and you're set. I feel like the wakeboarding world loves anybody that comes in. Cause wakeboarding is, it's not a small sport, but it's not a big sport. Like X Games is like a giant, like especially skateboarding. You have like Nigel Houston jumping off crazy stair sets and stuff, but Wakeboarding's still sick. Like Isaac getting up on the water yesterday, that that was so cool. Like just to see somebody else loving wakeboarding, loving the feeling of give, getting up on the board. And then I feel like he could become pretty good at it now that he's got up and carved and see, seen the fun in wakeboarding. And so any kid wanting to try, you can. At school, people don't really know what wakeboarding is. Some of my friends do but they're not really big about it. Uh, hopefully this summer I can get some of them out on the boat with me and try to teach them how to do it. I know one or two of my friends know how, but I feel like they could possibly get into the sport. My inspiration is a wakeboarder and in life comes from Massey Pifferati. He's a super cool dude, wakeboards and 
very good at it, has a mix between style and technical tricks, and I look up to him. He's one of the coolest wakeboarders and nicest wakeboarders and tries to involve you in everything. So he's really cool. Couldn't thank him enough for helping me in the sport, getting me to where I am today, giving me trick ideas, helping me with tricks. So. What's up, guys? My name's Kane. We're out here at my house, or the volcano playground, <laughs> and um, we're gonna. I've been working on a trick on the trampoline here, which I practice on, and um, so. I wanted to show y'all kind of the trick and give y'all a walk around to, about the trampoline and the whole space out here in my backyard. Real quick, so. There we go. And that's just a trick that I've been working on, trying to perfect. This rope is uh, like a bunch of the wakeboarders do it. And what it is, is you tie the rope to the tree and the tree is pretty much the boat in this case scenario and then you're back here so it stays tight and it's like it's you're wakeboarding so if i if the harder i lean back i can go as far back as i want it's it's this tree's gonna support me and then i got the rope so it's just like wakeboarding can't be A new board I got from uh, Snowboard Addiction on Instagram. They sent it over to me, and for practice, this is kind of extra practice for getting grabs and stuff because it's a little heavy, so it's hard to jump around on. But still, really fun, and um, you can jump around on it. They make different boards, and you do kind of different grabs, you work on grabs, stuff like that. My dad will come out here and double bounce me sometimes if I'm working on like a hard trick or something, like a double. And so he'll come out here, double bounce me to where I can get the highest point that I can to flip the trick. And it'll be uh, kind of like on the water because on the water you get more, uh, you get more height off the wave than you would just jumping. <laughs> when it comes to competition it's it's pretty nerve-wracking like trying to find your run that you're gonna throw if it's basically strategy like do you have three buoys well four buoys and ones if you fall then you're done i would describe it like pretty close to rodeo like you got eight seconds to make a move like you're on the bull or the uh bronco and you 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 go he's a really really cool kid obviously very very talented behind the boat and uh, starting things off strong, going the nose grab, heel side 360, getting his first grab under his belt, getting his first spin under his belt, coming straight back in on the indie toe side roll to revert, grabbing the opposite hand and having to late rotate that front side 180, and then getting things started right there with his first tech trick, the KGB, nice and easy for Kane. The Tootsie roll going two tech tricks back to back, and what has he got for his last trick? The whirly bird, and that is a stand-up pass for Kane Ward. So like I said, strategy is heavenly involved in wakeboarding. Like you have the four buoys here and here, and you wanna you can't fall in between these buoys. You wanna throw your hardest tricks at the end of your passes, most likely. And like it's where you're at. Like if I was riding last and somebody fell, I could die down my run a little bit, but 
say they threw down a banger run, then I'd have to do my hardest run or maybe add a trick. Who knows? It's just all about what they throw down and where you are in your thing in like your heat. Like I could be in front of this guy and I don't I don't know how good he is. Like he might be one of the best in our divisions. So I would have to throw down a, my best run and hope for the best. So that's kind of how it goes. Awesome stuff so far. We're gonna see if he can keep that momentum rolling as Kane Ward comes back in for pass number two. So Mark, my question now is um, obviously we've been seeing Kane throw down these double flips behind the boat. Will he try and stand up a pass or is he gonna go all out and um, do something for the history books here? Hey, you never know with these young riders. He's feeling it out right there with at least one back roll. That's the indie back roll for Kane. Then the half cab roll back this direction. Looking like he's setting up for something big. What have we got? We're hearing the pavilion go nuts right now. So um, he's edging in hard. He's going for the double. Oh my God! Oh my God! You are absolutely kidding me! <laughs> no way! Absolutely insane. I can't express how groundbreaking and how innovative that is for a 10 year old kid to go out and throw himself into a double flip let alone at the Nautique world titles when it comes to being nervous and nerves it's it's all about like I try to get away from it like I'll be on the dock stretching and stuff like I'll stretch on the dock for like an hour or two like with my airpods in like not listening to anybody else just focused locked in like i will i'll put my boots on before i ride and i'll keep my airpods in and like i'm i might even look away so i don't see who, what he throws because sometimes it makes me nervous sometimes it doesn't but you got to deal with it i feel like one tournament i looked away because i was nervous to see he what he was going to throw and i kept my airpods in to where i didn't hear what the announcer was saying what tricks he was throwing down so it it went for the best it worked out and uh even though I'm still nervous because I don't know what he threw on the dock and they're handing me the rope. Like I said, it's pretty close to rodeo kind of. So that's pretty much how I deal with my nerves, just trying to get away from it a little bit. Try for people to not be up on me like, you got it, you got it, you got this. Like, I know it's going to happen. They're going to say it, but I try to like not before my run because like I'm already focused, locked in, so. When it comes to creativeness, uh, I, I honestly like painting and watercolor and doing stuff like that. Like, I like art class. Like, I like doing stuff like that. And it, like, sometimes it goes into wakeboarding. Like, sometimes in wakeboarding, you want to do tricks that have creativeness. Like, that, again, this is why I love Massey Pifferati. He does crazy tricks. Like, creativeness of what if I grab it this way? What if I tweak it out like this? Like when we were jumping on the trampoline, um, how I kind of grabbed it here. It's all about different grabs. Like, and there's different names for all the grabs. But when you put them in a flip, like sometimes he'll put his arm through the handle and he'll do crazy flips and grab them at the same time, which is sick to me. Just like watching him and being like, okay, that's good inspiration. Like I, I kind of want to try this. I go out on the lake and if I don't get it that try, knowing that I have another set that I can do it and then just I don't know it's it's cool like the creativeness that involves in wakeboarding and in your daily life it's pretty cool how it goes together a top spot he turned double digits and he started doing double flips the youngest rider to ever land a double flip the youngest rider to ever do a double in a contest he is your 2021 Wakeboard World Champion for the Boys Division. It's K. Wong. So when it comes to awards and stuff like that, I, I love them just being in my room, seeing the history of 
where I, where I've started and where I am now and what's yet to come. So uh, you can always push tricks, look to that next level. One day I would love to become a pro and ride with the top dogs <laughs> and uh, ride up there on their level and uh, just riding with some of the people I look up to. Like that would be sick to me. Just like that's like I could be some kid wanting to do baseball like really bad and then looking up to Acuna Jr. or some player like that and one day I'm up there and I'm like one level below him and like we might be playing against each other or something like that's that would be sick to me to ride up there and I'm always trying to push my limits and it's kind of a battle against myself like if if I went past a tournament run that I did and I'm like okay what's next I look up to other people and see what kind of tricks they're doing and if I can add that to my contest run or bag of tricks and I might can do that and tweak it a different way than they did or maybe tweak it the same way and give them a little bit of credit. It's just all about that. So I have a trick idea in my mind of what I want to do before I edge out, especially in tournaments because I know my run. But um, when I edge out, I know what I'm doing. And if I've already done a trick, then I might set my mind on another trick or grab it a different way. Um, but yeah, I know what I'm pretty much gonna do when I edge out there. But yes, I can back out of stuff. So say I wanna do a 720, which is two full spins, and I don't get the right pop then off the weight, then I might back out and do a 540, which is a one spin and a half and then I could be like okay the wakes like this so I might need to do this but in competitions it's kinda you just do whatever like if the wakes wrong you kinda gotta send it because especially if somebody laid down a hard run but yeah you can kinda back out of different tricks especially if it's like if I'm doing like a I don't know like a KGB which is a back roll with a three six backside 360 I might can back out and go to roll to blind. There's different tricks that you can back out of more than others, but for sure you can back out of tricks. So a word you might want to know is like you don't want to say, oh, he, he crashed really hard, like it was a hard crash. You can say that, yeah, but most people say it was a digger <laughs> or like um, he slammed, like, I don't know, it's caught an edge. Caught an edge is a uh, mostly good use term for wakeboarding crashes. But yeah, there's a there's a few more, but I normally use uh, took a digger or ate it. <laughs> like I could do, I don't know, like a hard trick hit and then like catch an edge. Like you see, I just said one <laughs> and uh, I could say I took a digger or like bad edge. Just, it's it's all about the trick. Well, it's not all about the trick. It's kind of all about just what you're feeling, like what you're saying, what the mood is. In wakeboarding, it's we're not as, I don't know how to say this, but like we don't have as much lingo as like surfers do. So like we're not like radical. We don't do like stuff like this. We're more this and then uh, like sick. That was dope. And then... We, we got like little handshakes that we do as well. Like school handshakes, what we normally do is like, we go like this and then, but wakeboarding, like if you go up to somebody in the wakeboarding world, they're gonna do this here and then ducks. So you kind of want to know that cause you don't want to get into one of those awkward moments where it's like, oh wait, what, what are we doing? And then end up and you're like, oh, okay. So like, if you come up to somebody in the wakeboarding world, just go like this, just little heads up to know.
um, when it's choppy outside. It's not really a good day to go wakeboarding, but you can. And then when it's raining, when it's raining, it feels like little needles hitting you. And so it's, it hurts, but sometimes we do it because it might look good on camera. It might, the sun might be perfect. It might get better in the day as we go on. We just don't kind of know. Sometimes we get stuck out there in the rain and we have to, uh, a rider might be out there and we might have to pull him in. It's just, I don't know. It catches you in the moment. And then, but we don't really go out when it snows because it's freezing out there. And then we don't get a bunch of snow here. So uh, when it thunders and lightning, you kind of want to take cover, especially when you're out there on the water. But if it is, we're going to probably head home and call it a day. Grom Fest is really cool. We started it uh, two or three years ago where we scoured the internet and we looked for kids pushing the wakeboarding sport. Uh, a Grom is short for grommet. It means uh, like kids uh, that are into um, sports like uh, snowboarding, surfing, and like wakeboarding, like extreme sports. And so we invite a bunch of wakeboarders out, uh, like five to six people, and keep one or two of our friends and invite them out to a lake house that my uh, friend owns. And we uh, take them out and it's just a really fun week uh, of wakeboarding for everybody. We do a bunch of different activities. We jump off cliffs, high, high speed surfing, and then obviously wakeboarding and just have fun, stay up late, do a bunch of crazy stuff, have fires and sit around and I don't know, just have fun. It's, it's super sick just to have a bunch of wakeboarders pushing it out there. So it was cool, last year we had our uh, one girl and that was cool to have a girl out there this year. Her name's Zoe Carroll. And then we had a kid from um, Australia, his name is Parker Edwards. So wherever you are in this world, uh, you can come out, wakeboard with us if you're pushing the sport, and we'll scour the internet and look for you. Gromfest is really cool. Um, my dad and I want to carry on Gromfest as I get older and hopefully push the sport of wakeboarding and hopefully make my name known and for kids to be like, I would love to go out with this kid. And that, and that also pushes... Uh, them in the sport of wakeboarding to want to come out with me hopefully one day and have a fun weekend with kids their age. So Grom Fest is really cool. A bunch of crazy things can happen when you wakeboard. Um, this one makes me laugh but in the moment, it hurt a lot. So we were out here for a Hyperlite cable shoot and um, I fell in the pool, which is uh, where ramps and stuff are going out each side. And so we had a bunch of the, I fell in the pool and I was like, what if I get up here and if I sit on the thing and they jump over me? So the, all the Hyperlite guys were coming around and they were jumping over me and they were getting photos and like I was pointing up at them and it was pretty cool. The photos turned out to look pretty cool, but um, uh, my neck didn't turn out too well. <laughs> so the rope came up on top of the feature. The cameraman gave me a little uh, warning and I was like, okay, I'll just watch out for it. And he's like, okay. So um, looked away and see one coming up. And all of a sudden it hits me in the neck, wraps around uh, almost my whole neck, drags me for, for about five feet. Thankfully, I didn't get caught up in the rope, but I had a big rope burn, and I couldn't look about this far to the right or the left. So it was a pretty hard week going back to school, and I had to do uh, the uh, boat photo shoot as well at, with my neck like that. So we had to Photoshop some of that stuff out, but that's just one of the funny stories that I've had that still makes me laugh sometimes from Grom Fest. Uh, we did high speed surfing, which is where you get up to wakeboarding speed and um, you get in the little slot where the rooster tail is and uh, there's like this little uh, V shape from the boat 
you get in that little slot and the rooster tail pushes you so you're pretty close to the uh, boat and you're on a on a surfboard so it doesn't sound like it should work out but it but it does and so uh, once you get in the rooster tail uh, it pushes you and it's kind of scary getting into it and going that fast while you're on a surfboard because you're not strapped in and you're used to wakeboarding but I remember um, there's like five of us out there we were all freezing in the boat we were all shivering but la laughing because it was so funny because when you fall it you just get shot up the rooster tail or like go way out because it the boat's going fast so it's like and all of the all of the water is pushing like this to hit hit the wave so you go here and around the wave so it was pretty funny but if you skip to the clip in the video we were all sitting like real cold so but it was funny and we our laughs were like all like <laughs> because because it was so cold like we wanted to laugh but it was hard to laugh because uh it hurts your throat because you're so cold but that, that's just another story that's funny brings me memories I'm not superstitious, like, I'm, I don't go as far as, like, putting a dollar in my socks, something like that, but now I've got to wearing socks when I wakeboard, so if I miss my, uh, if I don't bring socks, it's probably going to be a bad day, <laughs> but um, that's the only thing I can really think of, just listening to music before I ride, that's kind of a, what I do every time. And then stretching, obviously, before I ride. And I feel like every sport is kind of that way. Stretch, listen to music before, and it's really about it. So physical training, I work out a little bit in the winter. And basketball definitely keeps me in shape. And uh, skateboarding, being on a board, that also keeps me in shape. Pumping down and, down and up ramps. I get sore a lot. Um, I'm actually looking into, like, cupping that I can do at home because like, I don't want to go and blow a bunch of money on therapy and stuff but um uh once you start getting into wakeboard wakeboarding and stuff and get sore I definitely recommend a massage gun these things are the best they you can massage yourself from home I always get it about every night and push it on my legs trying to get them because uh especially once you get into higher level tricks your legs hurt from going up and down then you get all these calluses on your hands and from grabbing onto the rope but rope technology is so high right now that i rarely get calluses but when i do they're they're small calluses and they they hurt all right groms my days are numbered on this board and i can't ride the murray jr forever somebody's got to step up and represent the brand right now there's a grom out there that's gonna ride this board they're gonna go as big as me have style like me, willing to take the crashes like me, and have a big bag of tricks like me. Is it you? When it comes to sponsorships, um, it's kind of a hard question to answer, but try to answer it the best I can. If I don't give a good representation, then you can go over to JB O'Neill's uh, YouTube, and he's got a whole video about it. But um, I'd say if you're involved with like a shirt company or something that is in your town that's especially helpful for you and thankfully we had russell marine we couldn't do it without them they provide us a boat boats about expensive that are like about the same price as our house so it's a pretty expensive boat but uh yeah aside from the point you want to like getting into wakeboarding uh once you get up you kind of want to start to learn tricks before you start look scouring the internet and stuff for uh, sponsors and then you might get into like a small business and uh, be like can you sponsor me at just asking around and if somebody uh, takes you in then uh, you can start putting stickers on your board promoting them on your Instagram stuff like that and that carries you a long way from your first time getting up to advanced tricks this board's got your back I'm Caden Ward and I ride Hyperlite. Board selection is definitely uh, key to wakeboarding. Uh, you can use a not so good board while you're starting out, but then once once you get into trying tricks and stuff, I would definitely definitely recommend one of these boards behind me. Hyperlite Murray Jr. just came out with a new one. This is not the new one, but there's got a few new ones in my garage. But um, 
definitely a, a better board than some board you would pick up at Walmart or something. So if you're on a road trip and you need to grab a board, look for like a local boat uh, marina or some, some place that might sell higher quality wake boards. And um, so on the bottom of these, uh, like ones that you would grab at like um, Walmart or something, uh, they don't really have as much tech as these do. So like these have fins right here and then a spine going down to where it's uh, easier on landings for you. And then um, the shape of the board is different than probably something you would pick up at Walmart. So it's a little different and um, definitely higher quality and will last you longer for sure. When it comes to my sponsors, Billabong, uh, they help me with closing. And then um, wanted to support the Volcano brand that we just came out with a little bit more. And then uh, Hyperlite provides boards for me. Amazing brand. Go check them out. And then Russell Marine. Couldn't do it without them. Provide us a boat, which is crazy. And um, this couldn't be possible without them. And then Flipside Water Sports. Um, they help us a lot as well. Uh, I go to some of their local competitions up in Birmingham. Uh, so go check them out. If you live in a local area close to Birmingham or you're ever down there, they got a cool 2.0. And sometimes they put on some tournaments of uh, wakeboarding on the cable that they have there or a boat. So Volcano Vest came out. Uh, this thing's pretty sick. Keeps you afloat. Uh, looks pretty good on the water as well. Uh, has my name on it right here. Initials right here. Hyperlight makes this, so can't thank them enough. And then... Uh, our shirts. We just got in some shirts. Um, the Volcano brand. This is pretty cool. It's got the Volcano on it. It says kind of my name on it. And um, this thing is pretty sick. Uh, stoked to have this brand right now. And got some hoodies in. Uh, these just came in. We should be launching the site soon. So thank y'all for watching. And uh, stay wild. night owl it like i don't know i have a weird routine and then like on weekends i wake up so early but s school days i want to sleep in want to skip it want to skip school pancakes well it depends bigger pancakes are good but then those like little waffle things the like the they're like little finger waffles those things are good you can dip them in so you can actually pick them up um uh, milkshake Christmas. Video games. Not that big of a fisher. Uh, once I get older, probably Florida lakes, but right now Alabama lakes because they are have smoother water, I feel like, in certain spots. Neither. <laughs> Instagram. Neither. I'm allergic to peanut butter. Hamburgers. I'm not a sushi guy. I don't really like sushi. Only thing I like is like shrimp. Uh, so, some country music's good to me, um, but some of it's sad. And and uh, uh, heavy metal's like, Nirvana's pretty good. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of different bands that I like, ACDC, stuff like that, so probably heavy metal. I do have a favorite quote, don't be afraid of death, be afraid of an unlived life. You don't have to live forever, you just have to live. Trust your wild side to me means um, go out and send it. Like do whatever uh, you love. Like just send it. Just go go for whatever trick you're chasing. Go for whatever dream you're chasing. Go for it. You you got it. Believe in yourself.